welcome to this new video. Today we are going to talk about Git workflow. Hey, have you subscribed already? If you haven't done so, please go ahead and subscribe so that you don't have to miss uh, more video that we are going to publish. So today we're talking about Git workflow for beginners. And the preview on the previous video, we actually talked about Git workflow, but it was just explanation. Now we are going to go to the terminal and we are going to explain the Git workflow for, for beginners. So let's jump on the terminal and make this happen. So I have my repository here, I have this repository here. I'm going to go ahead and actually get that cloned. So <clears throat> let's pop up the terminal here. I will go ahead and remove everything that I have here on the terminal. I do ls, it is empty. Now, what's going to happen, what's going to happen that is that the first thing I need to do is to make sure that my key is added, right? The first thing I need to do is to make sure that my key is actually added. So to do that, I will say cat, for example, I may have this key added already, but I will say cat id underscore dot perp. That's my key. I will copy that and try to add that to my GitHub repository. There's a video that I explained how to add your key to GitHub. I may have this key here. I don't know yet, but let us give it a try. I will go to settings, SSH key. Then I will try to create a new key. So I'll just call it Dell support, underscore VM, underscore Ubuntu. You can put any name to add a key. I need to log in. Oh, telling me that the key is in use, meaning that this key is already added to this Git uh, uh, to this GitHub account, which is great. So I can definitely go back. <clears throat> so let's go back to our repository, the repository that I was trying to work from. So this repository. So we go back to this repository now. I'm going to clone this repository now. I will clone this repository SSH because I mentioned earlier I want to commit my change at the end. If I clone HTTPS, it will ask me for a username and also it will ask me uh, uh, for the token. So I want to clone SSH. So I will go ahead and clone SSH. So this action, I will be, this action means that I am moving the code from the remote repository to the working directory. So I will do git clone. As you can see, I clone the repository. And if you can see here, this is my repository uh, name. We end up with this extension. So I went ahead and clone the repository. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, I have to cd into that repository. I actually cd into that repository. And I, when I do ls hyphen l, it shows me everything that is inside that repository. Now, I'm going to make some change. I'm going to make some change. Now, as of now, if I do, for example, git status, git status means that, hey, show me what changed, right? It says nothing. Nothing's happening. My work tree is my, my work tree is clean, right? Git status. Now, let's do Vim. Let's, for example, this file. Let's take this Docker Compose file, for example. And let's do Vim, Docker Compose. That's what I have. Now, what I'm going to do is that I will do some change. So uh, instead of uh, front end, I will change this one to probably UI. And I will come down here. I may change this one to probably, let's say, API. For example, I'll call that UI API. And I will can change the, the image to something called DevOps Easy Learning colon, maybe 001, right? I'm making some change here. So if I come down here, I can change maybe this port to 4878. So I made some change to this file. Then I will save the file. Now, if I do git status again, if I recall my git status, it was telling me that, hey, you modified something. Something has modified. Now, how does git know this? It knows that you modify something because git keep track of the change. So meaning that, as of now, whatever change you is on is on GitHub, you don't have that change here. It's not the same. So the code on GitHub and the code here are not the same no more. So that's going to call it's modified. Now the next thing that we need to do is that we need to move this from the working directory because this is our working directory to the 
staging area, right? And but we did get status to show us that, hey, this is what was modified. So to do that, I will do git add hyphen capital A, hit enter. So git, this remove the code from the working, this will actually, uh, this will actually move the code from the working directory to the staging area. So that's gonna be equivalent of git add. I will say git add, then the code has been, the code has been moved, right? When I say git add, the code has been moved. Now, if I do git status again, it will tell me that the working tree is clean. I have moved that code already, right? And you guys can see that the color changed when I say git add here. Now, it is saying that it was red. Now, when I say git add, it is green. Now, and git can even tell, git is saying that, hey, change to be committed. Use git restore stage five to on stage, right? If I want to bring this back, I can use git restore to bring this back. We will see that after. So now, this code is on, is on the remote, this code is actually on the staging area. So we say git add, then we say git code, git, git add, it takes that. Now, I need to move this to the local repository. To do that, I will say git commit, hyphen m, I will pass a message, then I, I can say something like modify, you can see something like modify the compose file. You need to quote. If you don't quote, it's not going to work. So the commit message hyphen m always quote. You can use single quote or double quote. It doesn't doesn't matter. So I will hit enter, and you, as you can see here, it is telling me that one file change for insertion, right? For deletions. So it means that I made a change on one file. I actually made uh, on that change, I made four insertion, then I made four deletion, meaning that I actually replaced uh, something, right? So if I do now this status again, it will tell me that the working tree is clean because now the code is on the local repository and it's time now to push that into our, uh, into our remote repository, right? It's time to push that into our remote repository. Before we do that, if I go back to GitHub and click on this file, you will see that this is what this file this file has. So let's go back and let's go back to our terminal. And actually, I will do git push. It has push it, right? It is push. Now, push me, git push me that yeah, I've actually sent this to GitHub. Now, if I go on GitHub and refresh and I click on this file, as you guys can see, one minute ago, meaning that there was a change on this file one minute ago. I can click here it will show me the change. So as you guys can see, I put DevOps learning here. I change the service name to UI. This file has changed. If I click here, for example, to see what change, these are the change that I made, right? These are the change that I made. So then I can make another change. Also, I can come down here, for example, and I can create a file, right? I can come down there and I can create a, a file. So let's create a file like deploy. Let's say vim deploy.yaml. Let's create a deployment.yaml. So let's go to, to Google. Let's go, for example, to Google and try to get a sample deployment. So we say Kubernetes deployment file. So I just want to pick up a file out there for that. So we can go to the Kubernetes documentation and we start to steal a file from there. Let's, 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 let's pick up this file and let's go back and actually put that file here. So I actually created a new file. So I created a new file called deploy.yaml. Now I can do the same thing, git add, right? I can do git add. Then if I do git status, for example, it will show me that I added this, it is green, right? Then I can do git commit hyphen M, say added a deployment file. As you can see here, one file change, 22 insertion, meaning 22 line, and it's giving you everything. So I can say git push. As you guys can see here, when I say git push, it doesn't ask me for a username and it doesn't ask me for a username and password because I have the key added. So if I go back here, if we go back to our repository, 
and actually refresh, I have a file here called deploy. This file here called deploy that I just added, if I click to the commit, it's, everything is green because I just added it, right? Everything is green because I just added it. But let's say, for example, we make a change, right? Let's create a directory and also make a change. So um, I'm going to say make deal, let's say ls. So I can say make deal, for example. I call, let's call that directory Tom. I will say make deal Tom. Let's call that directory Tom. Then I can actually, I can say copy, right? Let's say copy deploy into, into Tom as what? Copy deploy into Tom as deployment. Copy deploy into Tom as deployment of YAML, right? Then, for example, if I say git status, it will say, hey, I created a directory here called Tom, right? If I say git add, then I say git status again, it is red, it is green. So when you say git status and the color is red, meaning that you have not actually added that yet. Then if you say git status and it is green, it means that you have added that. So red just means that the, it, the change is, is now only on your uh, working directory. And when you see, when the color is green, it means that the change is now on your staging area. So then we are going to do git commit, hyphen m, added a directory, Tom. Then if I say git status again, I really won't show me anything because git status only track change uh, between uh, the working directory and the staging and the staging area, right? Then if we say git push, if we go back to our repository, you will see that I now have a repository called Tom. It happened now. And if I click inside, you will see that I have a deployment deployment file here that I added inside inside Tom. So that's what is called a Git workflow. That's what it used to move, like make the change on the code or do anything that you, you want. So if I say Vim, for example, if I say, for example, Vim, um, I will say Vim Tom and deploy, deployment. Let's say, for example, if I go to Kubernetes and steal another uh, deployment or YAML file, for example, to add it to Tom. Let's go get maybe a stateful set. Let's take this code, piece of code. If I come down here, then I remove everything here. Then I can do git add. Can recall my git commit, add a directory, add a change to directory term, then git push. If I go back here, I'll refresh, it will show me that hey, there's a change happening now here. If I click, I go in here you will see the new piece of code that I add. Then if I click here, and this is what changed actually. Git is tracking the history to show me that, hey, this is what actually changed. And everything that is right here, it means that those are things that, everything that is right means that those are things that were removed and everything that is green and those are things that have been, have been added. So now, as you guys can see, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. And it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Now, one thing also that you can do, let's say, for example, I come down here. Let's create a file, for example, or let's remove. If I say remove, if I say, for example, uh, touch, right? If I say touch Houston, if I create a file called Houston, if I do LS, you guys will see Houston. If I do git status, you guys will see Houston. Now, what if I I don't want, you know, you know, so let's say Houston, let's commit that. Let's say git add hyphen A. Now when I say git status, I have Houston. So it's showing me that actually 
Houston is on my staging area. What if I want to bring back? I don't want to. I don't want to commit this. I created the fire called Houston, but I don't want to commit that fire. How do I do? How do I bring this back to my working directory? And it's simple. Git show you what to do here. If you want to on stage, you just have to say git restore, and then you put the file name. Put this. You put the file name. Now, if I do git status again, right now, it become an on track file, right? It become an on track file, right? If I say git status again, it become an on track file. If I can recall when I say git status earlier, you see that here it was saying change to be committed. Now I have on stage that and the file become on track, right? The file become on track, meaning that um, that file is no more on the on the staging. It's no more on the staging on the staging area. That's how simple it is. It's just simple. It's git add. When you make a modification, you do git add. Then after you do git uh, uh, commit, you put a commit message. Then you do git push. Um, git push at the end. I hope you like the video and see you on the next video. Thank you.